Very interestingly, while Season of Discovery is looking to produce its very own gold making meta. With the level cap being set at 25 along with the new raid and PvP zone, and even with new items from Profession and so forth that people will be wanting to spend gold on to min-max their characters. Here are 5 Season of Discovery gold making tips that can help you get an edge in those aforementioned activities or just to help you make much more gold. So with that, let's start with bags. Since bags are really important not only for gold making such as if you're going to be doing farming or gathering, but also for convenience in general. Starting off with vendor bags, the biggest one is actually the 12 slot huge bounce sack, which you can actually buy from bag vendors in major cities. However, the 9 or 10 gold cost, depending on your reputation, is quite expensive indeed, especially at level 25. So if you want to sort of downgrade a little bit, there are a lot of 10 slot bags that you can easily pick up, not only from tailors, which can give you small silk packs or if you're a tailor yourself, those are also 10 slotters and require silk cloth. And then there are also some quests that you can do to acquire free, well you have to do the quests but you don't have to pay gold for it, uh, 10 slaughter bags. Starting with, if you go over to Wheeling Caverns, this is available to both Alliance and Horde, you can actually go down to this area. This is kind of a secret area, I hadn't known about it before, but if you drop down from the top above the cave entrance to the Wheeling Caverns and the Barrens, um, you can actually go into this little zone with NPCs or this little cave where you can actually pick up quests. One of the quests, the reward is actually a 10 slot bag. And to get this bag, you actually don't have to even zone into the instance. You can actually just farm the raptors, albeit they are elite raptors, but at level 25 you should be able to defeat them fairly easily. So you just have to farm the raptors and like the flying beasts, I suddenly forget what they're called, but you can farm the beasts in the cave without zoning into int instance to get the deviate hides that are the quest items for this quest. And in addition to that really quick, even though the Willing Caverns is more of a horde favored zone, right, being in the barrens, the quest is indeed available to Alliance side, and I would actually argue that Alliance actually has a good here because there are two additional Alliance only quests that reward 10 slot bags as well. One being the Night's Watch in Darkshire, and the other one being Digging Through the Ooze in Menethil Harbor. So you can definitely go and do those two quests, or all three quests, and not only that, but if you're into, say, fishing or want to sort of gamble for an even larger bag, you can go over to a higher level zone such as Moonglade is probably the safest place and try fishing to be able to, uh, at a rare chance, get a Journeyman's Backpack, which is a 14 slot bag. If you get this, you don't necessarily even have to use it because you could probably sell it for a pretty good profit. And lastly, there's another way to get a 14 slot bag, which is to do some activities at Dark Moon Fair when it comes around to exchange 50 Dark Moon Fair prize tickets for a 14 slot Dark Moon storage box. And coming back to the Wailing Caverns instance really quick, I actually am going to name this the second gold making method, although it doesn't necessarily involve you having to zone into the dungeon, but the Wailing Caverns is going to be a really lucrative place to make gold, especially if you have a party. And um, if you're on Alliance side, you will have to take the risk of going to the Barrens and encountering, you know, Horde players while you're at it, right? However, if you're on a PvE server, you won't be killable by the Horde unless you flag yourself for PvP. So that'll actually still make the Wailing Caverns a very safe place and a good location for gold farming. Especially if you go back to the cave where you picked up the quests for the 10 slot bag. There's another quest that, especially if you're a leather worker, um, you can actually pick up this quest from Ebru here to get the pattern for Deviate Scale Belt. If you're a leather worker, you can obviously use it, but if not, you can also sell it on the auction house because it's not a buy and pickup uh, recipe. And on the side here, there are also um, recipes that you can pick up from this NPC. Do note that these are limited quantity recipes, so if a lot of players are coming to pick these up, you might have to park your character there or come back later or wait a while for the recipes to respawn. But I imagine these will hold decent value as well, especially at this level 25 uh, bracket, right? Now, of course, if you're a leather worker, you can benefit from all these recipes, but if not, 
you can either sell the recipes or you can also, in addition to these like quests and recipes, and even if you go to the cave area just outside the Wailing Caverns instance, again, you'll be able to farm the raptors and cloud serpents there, that's the name, um, to be able to get deviate hides or deviate scales rather. Deviate hides are the quest item for the bag, but deviate scales are the um, reagent that you'll be able to farm and sell in the auction house likely for a good price, or if you're a leather worker, you can use that for these aforementioned recipes, right? So that's probably a good farming spot as well. As long as, again, there's not too much competition, especially from the horde side. Although you could also go into the instance itself and do the quests and just farm the beasts inside, right? If you can get a group going. And yeah, another way to make gold from the Wailing Caverns, and this can even work while, for example, you're forming a party for the Wailing Caverns and you're waiting for someone to get there, but as to fish up in the pools nearby the instance for deviate fish, which by the way I use in the savory deviate delight cooking recipe that'll transform you into a ninja or a pirate. And so this fish and this recipe, the savory deviate delight food, is likely going to be very popular as people love, you know, turning into a ninja and raiding or styling on people in PvP as they have done in the past, right? Um, so if you're able to get this cooking recipe as well, you're sure to be able to make a ton of gold just by crafting these. Or you can even sell the recipe on the auction house because in the past, this has been really expensive unless they use the buffed drop rates from more recent times. Moving on to the next strategy, and this is also sort of an extension from the Wheeling Caverns um, Deviate Scale Farming. By the way, there's also a perfect deviate scale I forgot to mention before, but both are materials used in those deviate scale recipes, right? Leather recipes that are likely going to be seeing a lot of demand. So either way, the next tip I have for you is to farm additional rare items like scales and leathers used in armor crafting. So I talked about the deviate scales already from around and within the Wailing Caverns. Another great way to farm um, these like useful materials is murlocs. So you'll specifically be farming the slimy, uh, slimy murloc scales and you'll be able to find murlocs in say uh, areas like silver pine forest um, or if you're horde and uh, westfall or dark shore if you're lions right basically like shore areas are great for farming um, murlocs and by getting these skills um, this is yet another important material used in certain uh, recipes namely the murloc scale bell and murloc scale breastplate for leather workers moving on especially for um, alliance you can farm red whelps in the wetlands so these are little like dragonlings and you can get these red whelp scales that'll also be used in leather working for the red whelp gloves and next uh, for murlocs and this is more of a challenging farm um, these are higher level murlocs from Hills Brad Foothills, the Swallow Marsh, and Stranglethorn Vale. Um, some of these places might be somewhat inaccessible at level 25, but if you can get a group together, like with a healer especially, you might be able to tackle some of these tougher zones, right? And it'll, it is likely to be quite lucrative as well. Because, for example, if you can farm thick murloc scales from these aforementioned zones, you can then supply materials for even better recipes um, again for leather working. And not to forget the other professions, of course blacksmithing will be primarily reliant on mining so that's more for gathering, but if we're talking about farming in addition to the leather working materials that I just mentioned, you can also of course farm cloth right for tailoring. And some notable areas include right in Ashenvale which will be a pretty contested zone with the PvP event happening there. But in Ashenvale, especially stuff like, or places like here where there are like fur bulks and whatnot, you can definitely farm cloths like silk cloths that'll be extremely useful um, and can potentially even be made into bags as well, right? Whether or not you are tailor, you can farm these and maybe get groups to farm these. And in addition to Ashenvale, you can perhaps also check out centaurs in Thousand Needles. Um, again, especially if you're Horde, this is a bit of a higher level area, but you can kill like humanoids, like centaurs and kobolds in the Thousand Needles to collect silk cloth as well. Um, Alterac Mountains, which is also a somewhat higher level zone and can be quite dangerous. The Alterac Mountains also has a decent number of mobs that are able to drop 
silk cloth at a pretty good raid, but this will likely require a group or a super decked out character from raids to be able to pull off uh, more consistently, and especially if you have like higher hit chance or a higher spell hit chance. Next, I'm gonna quickly talk about fishing. Um, so in addition to the deviate fish that I talked about earlier, that's a great way to farm with fishing at a low level and safe area. And fishing hasn't had the best like reputation or popularity thus far, but I think in the season of discovery, especially with the level cap being sort of limited, um, and with higher level zones still being available, it can kind of have a pretty special or interesting niche wherein with fishing, you don't have to get into combat with like higher level monsters necessarily, right? Well, you might like have the risk of aggroing some of them along the way while running into a higher level zone. But with fishing, you can potentially like go to a higher level zone. Don't, you know, have to fight the monsters, but you can just fish there for some higher level and more useful stuff, right? Such as you can potentially find junk boxes in which some of the stuff you can get from these are stuff like mage weave cloth, which are extremely hard to get at level 25. And if you manage to get mage weave cloth, you can even, if you're a tailor, make higher level bags, mage weave bags at 12 slots, or perhaps also sell this to, you know, other tailors or on the auction house. Um, in addition, you can also try fishing up bags themselves, like I mentioned before, go over to places like Moonglade to try to fish up some higher level bags. You can even go over to like really high level zones potentially, like level 50s and above zones like Winter Spring, and be able to fish up some of these super high end bags, at least at level 25, right? But again, these zones are probably too dangerous at this level, but can be you know, worth considering potentially anyway. And for my last goal making tip, that is to not only pre-plan the professions, the two major professions that is that you're going to take for a season of discovery, but also perhaps even before that, take a look at the new recipes and items that are going to be added to each professions, especially since with level 25 having this new raid and PVP, Blizzard is actually adding new sort of end game items uh, for professions. For example, for crafting professions, they will each get epic armor that you'll be able to craft um, that are looking very powerful indeed. And then even for say enchanting and alchemy, they're getting new um, consumables like mana oil and potion or elixirs rather. And then engineering is getting a new shredder auto salvage unit, but we're not really sure what that does. But anyhow, the point here is to, and even though these like materials to craft these new items are not yet revealed, it would be good to pay close attention to them. For example, if we know what specific materials are going to be used for these new items, we'll know that these materials will have pretty high demand, right? And thus it might be good to go and target and farm these, for instance. Or if you have some of these professions, you will have a better idea of which materials to say, pick up at a cheaper price when you see it or go out of your way to farm up. And with that, those are my top tips for preparing for the season of discovery. Of course, as I mentioned, I might be adding some more resources either to the description below or in the form of some new videos such as some additional goal making strategies, the best add-ons that you can use in the season of discovery and so on and so forth. And with that, let me know what you think in the comment section below if you have any other tips to add, and I will catch you in the next video or in Azeroth. Peace.